Welcome to State Attack. Let's take a look at the Microsoft Edge browser. This is the default browser that comes with Windows 10. And you can see it's pretty modernly designed and this actually is a decent browser. So when you first launch it, you're brought into your kind of start screen where you can see a news feed, you see your actual weather conditions for your current location, and different news articles, apps to download. And this is all customized based upon your browsing preferences and your history and everything that you do with Cortana. And right here in the actual search bar, what I can do is either do a web search or an actual just enter in a URL. So if I was looking for, say, funny pictures of cats, all I would have to do is type that in. And now it's going to do a Bing search and it shows me funny pictures of cats. But if I were to come back to that page and I can actually enter in a website, so let's just say facebook.com, for example, it takes me directly to Facebook. So that little search bar right there on the actual start page allows me to either do a Bing search or to do an actual web page. Now you notice up here at the top of the screen, I have my forward and back buttons. I have my refresh and even my home button. And the home button will bring you to the, your start page or we can actually customize that and I'll show you here in just a second how to do so. And then we have options for creating new tabs. So here is the new tab page and it's got some top sites that I might find interesting. So I can click on those and quickly just jump into them, create a new tab, say jump into Twitter again. And this is kind of neat. You'll also notice that for some of these, they have apps. When they say get the app or open the app, that means there's an app in the Microsoft store that I can either download and get on my Windows 10 computer or actually open it directly. So being that I already have Facebook downloaded, what I can do is click open the app. And instead of opening a new tab like we did earlier, this opened up Facebook app directly onto my Windows 10 computer. So that's kind of neat. And then we have over here on the right hand side of the screen, we have some options. I have this slide out menu, which I can see in my favorites, my reading list, my history, and even any downloads that I have. I can pin this open. So now it's kind of taken up a portion of my screen and notice that no matter what tab I open up in or where I go, this window is kind of open. And if I hit this X, it'll actually close out that window. Now when I'm actually at a website, notice I cannot do this, these options here are kind of grayed out whenever I'm on the new tab or the start window. But say I actually come to another screen. I now have the option of making a web note or actually sharing. So if I make a web note, what this will allow me to do is draw on the screen, highlight, and even clip out certain portions. So right now I kind of have a drawing. All I have to do is click and just kind of draw and I can create whatever I want. The highlighter allows me to highlight behind text. So that's kind of neat that it knows this is actually text that I want to highlight behind. Notice that it kind of does it over the button. It's not highlighting behind the button, it's highlighting over. So that's why the sign up text has become white. And the same thing here, it doesn't recognize these as anything but kind of flattened images. So when I try and highlight over it, it doesn't recognize that there's text in there. But if I highlight over the sign up, it recognizes there's text and that's kind of cool and it feels more like it's hiding behind. If I use the eraser, I can erase my highlights or anything that I've drawn right here on the screen. So it's kind of erased those. I can draw attention to certain portions by adding a text box. I can just say something like take a look. So now I've got that. All I have to do is click on another portion of the screen and then I can add in another box. If I just wanted to copy out a specific region of the page, just click and hold and drag and I've copied that and then I can go ahead and share it with my actual share extension up here and I can share it with any one of these applications that are on my Windows 10 computer. So I can either save this out directly as a note or I can go ahead and share it just as I tried and I can now exit that view. I can open up this menu here which is going to open up the actual settings for Edge Browser where I can open up a new window, a new private window. I can change my zoom scale so right now it's set to 200 but notice if I go out to 100, it kind of shrinks everything down. So depending upon the screen that you're using, you can change a custom zoom right here. I can cast media. I can find. So this is actually a search. So if I was looking for a word, say photo, it's going to highlight the word on the screen right there in blue, letting me know that I can find that word. I can print the page, pin this to start so I can pin the page to my start menu. I have developer tools. I can open an Internet Explorer. And then what we're really looking after is our settings. 
So Edge has two different themes. We have a light theme and a dark theme, and I can choose whichever theme I'd like to use. Unfortunately, this is not a system-wide theme. This is just going to be for the Edge browser. Whenever I open Edge, I can either start a new page, a new tab page, previous pages. So right now, if I were to close Edge, we'll open it up. Notice it actually opened up and remembered the position of all my tabs. So that's what they mean by previous pages here in the settings. Or I can even open up to a list of specific pages. So I can choose and create a custom page, Bing or MSN. So if I do custom page, what I do is enter in a web address. So if I say wanted facebook.com, we'll hit the plus button, then we'll do Twitter. Hit the plus button, let's do Google. And then for last, let's just do Instagram. So now what I do if I close Edge, open up Edge, notice it's opening up all those tabs. I didn't have to tell it to do anything. I set that up in my preferences. So if these are websites you frequently like to visit whenever you open up the Edge browser, you can set those here in the settings for your custom specific set of pages. I can even choose to open new tabs in top sites, a blank page, or top sites and suggested content. So there's a lot of options here as far as just basically opening up new pages. I can customize my favorites so I can import and I can show or hide that favorites bar so I can have that be persistently there. I can clear my browsing history so I can choose to see what I'm going to be clearing out and if I don't want to clear those out I can just check those off and then hit clear and it will effectively clear out my browsing history. If I am signed in with my Microsoft account on multiple devices, I can sync my content. So it'll sync my reading list, my favorites, anything that I add into the Edge browser, it'll all sync across my Microsoft account. Now with the reading view, whenever I come to an article, so let's just say go to msn.com. I'm going to choose an actual article over here. So let's just choose a random one. So now what I can do is add this to my reading list. I'm going to click on the favorites up here. And what I'm going to do is click on reading list now. So we'll go ahead and click add and it's been added to my reading list. Notice that's also the way that I add favorites. So if I were to click on favorites, I can give this a name and save it to a specific area of my favorites as well. So now if we open up that side menu that we had earlier and click on reading list, it's going to open up that web page that I was just at and I'll be able to read everything that was on there. So that reading list we see we have our default reading style. I can choose light, medium, or dark. So that's actually going to change the theme of the web browser and I can change my reading view size. Now there are some advanced settings such as I can show the home button. So the home button over here in the left hand side of the browser, I can actually choose to show or hide that. I can block pop-ups, use flash, set up proxies, and even change some privacy settings. So Edge can save passwords, it can save form entries, I can send do not track requests, I can have Cortana assist me in Edge. And I can even change the actual uh, search address bar. So right now everything I search for is going to go through Bing. But if I'd rather it go through say Facebook or Google or Twitter, I can choose one of those actual search engines to whenever I do a search. So if I were to say do Google search, we'll set as default. Now if I were to open up that new web page, so say I was looking for funny pictures of cats. Notice this time it did a Google search instead of doing a Bing search. And that's because what I did when I came into the settings in my advanced option was actually changing my search, um, my search provider here to Google instead of Bing. And if I wanted back to Bing, just click set as default. Now Bing is now my default. There are also more options for showing my search history as I type blocking cookies, which you shouldn't do. You should probably just leave that alone. Let sites save protected media licenses, use page prediction, and even help with malicious sites with the smart screen filter. So these are some more of your advanced options. This one will actually help you, the malicious sites with screen filter, will actually highlight a site for you if it's malicious and you shouldn't probably go to that. And it'll let you know before doing so. This actual page prediction, so whenever you're typing in looking for something, it will actually predict what you're trying to fill in and actually give you better predictions over time. 
And then the sites that say protected media licenses, that's anything, say Adobe or anything like that. If you have a media license for something like that, you can save. So it's more like a password, but for your licenses for any sort of applications. So these were some of your options for the Edge browser. As you can see, it's quite a bit better than I feel Internet Explorer was. It's pretty powerful. It's pretty fast. A lot of the stuff has been happening pretty quick. And I like the overall design and feel of it. It does fit in with Windows 10. So for more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to State of Tech. And we'll see you in the next video.